Um, break, build, repeat. Nice. Speaking of alternate titles for uh, Die Another Day, Live, Die Tomorrow, whatever that Tom Cruise movie is called, there's no way to know. Um, break, build, repeat wants to know. Back in September, Ridley Scott made mention of a possible new Alien movie. As someone well-versed in both the technical and aesthetic side of filmmaking, what key effects in the film do you think can't be replicated in any other way than practical effects? Set bursts, ch sets, chest bursters, vehicles, etc. And there's no hard and fast rules, man. I mean, Ridley Scott had the uh, practical effects team for Alien Covenant make up thousands and thousands of gallons of blood, of, of fake blood, because he wanted fake blood spraying everywhere. But on The Departed, again, I'm bringing up The Departed because I saw it recently, but The Departed has no practical blood effects in it, apparently. All the shooting blood is, 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 is CG. And, and Scorsese said that it changed his life to be able to do it that way. It was so much easier and he got so much more done and he was able to concentrate on the meat of the scene rather than the practical effects. So two directors with two totally different approaches. I will say it's not about, I think, what the, I think the difference between practical effects and CG effects, the biggest difference is not necessarily the effect on us, the audience. And as CG improves consistently and as physics models improve, et cetera, and as animators get better, new generations of animators are coming up, as they get better, that, that line between practical effects and CG is going to get narrower and narrower and narrower in terms of what the final product is to us, the audience. It's just going to get better. CG is going to get better and better and better. But the real difference between those two is the effect on the actors in the movie. And it's back to what I was originally saying about the way Ridley Scott so presciently built the sets for Alien. It's his second movie. His second movie. He's in his 40s, I believe. He's already had a major career as an important commercial director. And now he's decided to make movies. And this, in his second movie, it's crazy to me how brilliant it is. Um, he creates this environment for his actors. And then he asks them to improvise. And what he ends up with is this blue-collar space trucker movie, um, which is like Ten Little Indians, right? It's like an Agatha Christie novel. They're just one by one. There they go. It's a, it's a horror. It's a gothic horror movie. Um, but those actors being in those locations and being surrounded by the worlds that we're witnessing, I think means what we're getting as an audience is better. I know that so many of the actors in the Star Wars franchise for the prequels became exhausted of acting against blue screen. It became really just really rough on them because while their profession is one of pretend, they like help. They like looking at the world they're supposed to be walking around in. And I totally get that. Um, so I don't, I mean, there are still some things that practical effects can do that are so much better than CG right now, um, simply because of the unexpected consequences of like flowing water, exploding frames, blood spattering and things like that. But again, that line gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But the real thing is what happens to the actors on the set. So I think you're still going to have plenty of directors who have the clout and the budgets to be able to do that. And then you're going to have young upstart directors who can do everything using just their phone. And I'm totally sure that's going to happen and be amazing. Um, and then they'll get budgets that are bigger and they're going to want to build practical sets. Yeah. I mean, the thing that the, the crew of The Mandalorian keeps on talking about in all the behind-the-scenes footage about the volume and about how they film The Mandalorian is how great it is to be able to marry all the benefits you can get from expanding a set with CG and doing that practically on set so the actors are actually handling stuff and feel like they're in the environment that you are pretending that they are in. So I, I, I you know... I think this dichotomy that we are constantly talking about culturally between practical effects and CG effects, um, I think that, that drawing a line between those is, is a, 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 it, it's a false qu qualifier. Uh, I think that the way production is going to go is much more along the lines of Mandalorian. And I don't think it's too long before we have some kid in the Ukraine or China um, buying a bunch of cheap L uh, OLED 
televisions and putting them in their bedroom and creating a completely virtual uh, virtual room. I'm sure that if it hasn't already happened, and I'm sure someone's already sending me a link, it's going to happen in the next six months. And that, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Ultimately, the reason we're here to talk about Alien is because it's a great story, and it's a story with characters that like we identify with and that draw us in, and it feels, uh, the fear feels scary because we are drawn into that narrative, and that's a lovely escape, and escape is, is hard won these days. Um, so yeah, you know, I think a, a lot of us have gone back, over the last year in the lockdown. A lot of us have gone back to some of the franchises that built us, that, that helped make our brains the way they are, uh, to find solace and succor in those stories and escape and escape. It is so important to have a place to go, to visit, even if it's a scary place, just to take yourself out of the current reality, because um, occasionally the current reality can be rough on us. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one day, not a one day build, it's a live stream. <laughs> I, sorry, I, I, I say a lot of things on camera over and over again as the weeks go by and then I forget. Thank you so much for joining me for this live stream. It has been a sheer pleasure. I'm gonna complete these two steps on my Ecto-1 and put it back and I'll probably be working on it again uh, for the next live stream. If you haven't seen Alien, go watch Alien. Go watch Aliens. You don't have to watch any of the others. Uh, those two are two of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and uh, yeah, stay safe, wear your masks, take care of each other, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching that entire video. If you would like to support Tested even further, well, I'm here to tell you that you could become a member. If you follow the links below, you'll see there are several tiers of membership depending on how much you'd like to pay and how much access you would like to me and the Tested team. And membership comes, as always, with some excellent benefits, including uh, questions that I'll answer in live streams. The questions have been so amazing and exclusive videos and exclusive content. Follow the links below and we will see you next time.